Welcome back to the PXGrid developer video series. In this video, we'll be going over the PXGrid SDK, configuring ICE for the PXGrid, and running a few of the sample scripts. Let's get started. To download this SDK, head over to the PXGrid's DevNet page. Choose Downloads, and then Latest SDK. Then you can pick the language you wish to download. In this video, we'll be working with Java. The tarball will be downloaded to your local machine. Go ahead and untar it, You'll find a few directories. Let's look through each one. The CGCL folder contains a compressed version of the CSDK. We won't be using this now, but it has a similar structure as the current SDK. The doc folder holds API documentation and tutorial pages. Reference these as you connect your application to PXGrid. The lib folder contains the PXGrid library jar files We'll go over how to add these to your Java application in a later video. The readme text file contains some basic instructions on how to run PXGrid samples. The samples folder contains some bite-sized PXGrid client applications. These demonstrate the basic usage of PXGrid SDK. The bin folder contains executable bash scripts that run these sample Java projects. The search folder contains sample certificates that are used by the samples and in ICE to authenticate these sample clients. The conf folder holds properties that the samples use. The lib folder holds the PXGrid SDK library jar file. And finally, the source folder holds the actual source code for each of these samples. It's a good idea to look through these sources and, refer and reference how they are built. The XSD folder contains schema files that the SDK uses. Now let's try ex executing one of the sample scripts, session subscribe.sh. This sample will create a client that subscribes to PXGrid's session capability. We'll then run a session traffic simulator and the client will print any notifications it receives from the grid. Before we can execute the sample, we'll need to perform some configuration on ICE administrative UI. I'll be using my ICE node and it's in standalone mode. The first thing to do is, after we've logged in, is to enable the PXGrid persona. Navigate to the Administration, System, and then Deployment page. Dismiss the Information dialog and select the node from the table. Under the General Settings tab, check PXGrid box, and then click Save. This will enable the PXGrid persona. But since it will take a few minutes to be up and running, let's do some other configurations and then check back on the PXGrid page. So now we'll upload the sample certificates to our ICE node so that it can trust our sample client. Navigate to the Administration, System, Certificates page. You'll see the System Certificates page by default. Before we can upload the sample system cert, let's upload its root certificate to the ICE Trust Store. Click Trusted Certificates from the left menu, choose Import, click Choose File, and navigate to the root sample cert file under the certs folder in the pxgrid sdk. We can leave the rest of the form as is and then click submit. You should see the sample root certificate in the table now. Now let's head back to the System Certificates page and upload the sample system certificate. Click System Certificates and then choose Import. Ensure that the current ICE node is selected and then click Choose File to choose the proper certificate file. It should be the ICE Sample1.crt file under the Certs folder in the SDK. We need to choose the corresponding private key file as well. It's called ICE Sample1.key. The password is lab123, all lowercase. Then we check the PXGrid box under the usage section and click submit. Once the certificate is imported, we should be able to see it on the system, system certificates table. 
Nice, our ICE can now trust the PX Grid client. Now that some time's passed, let's go over to the PX Grid services page and see if the persona has come up. Navigate to Administration, PX Grid Services. This is the administrative UI for PX Grid. Admins can come here to perform any actions on active clients and monitor their activity. We can see that ICE node itself has already established two clients. One represents the admin persona and the other represents the MNT persona. At the bottom, we can see the status message that says ICE is indeed connected to PX Grid. Looks like PX Grid is up and running. Let's ensure that the auto approval is enabled for our PX Grid sample client. Select the settings tab and as you can see, PX Grid is set up by default to automatically trust any clients that have the appropriate certificates. Use this form to set your authentication preferences. All right, let's head back to the Clients tab. Once our client starts up, we should see it show up here. Now we'll open up a terminal window and head over to the PX Grid SDK Samples bin folder. If we execute the session subscribe script with the dash H option, we'll see an informative message that details what parameters are necessary. Even though we can use a config file, let's just directly add our parameters to the command itself. First is the dash A, which will take in the PX Grid server's host names. We just have one here. Then we use dash U to specify our client's username. How about we call it PX Grid Sample? Because PX Grid supports username password authentication, we can use the dash W to specify a password. However, in this demo, we'll just be using certificate based authentication. So let's use dash K option to specify the Java sample Java key store file. This key store file contains the same certificates that were uploaded to ICE. The dash P option will uh, take in the, the key store's uh, password. We also need to identify the root trust store using the dash T option. This is just another Java key store file with the root sample certificate loaded in. Dash Q lets us specify a password for this trust store. Once we start the script, PX Grid Client connects to ICE in a matter of seconds. Let's head over to the ICE admin UI and see if it actually shows up. If we refresh the table, we can see that the PX Grid sample client has been added to our list of clients and that is part of the session capability. Now let's run a session traffic simulator. This tool will generate radius authentications and send them to ICE. Before running the tool, we will need to configure a few things on ICE. The first thing we need to do is enable radius on the default NAT. Once this is done, you need to add an internal user to ICE. Here, I'm creating a user called sample user. Awesome. Now that ICE is ready, I'm going to start the tool and have the sample user authenticate. We'll then see that ICE publishes this data over PX Grid, and pretty soon our client will receive the session notifications. Awesome. So now you can use this example to explore the rest of the SDK samples. It really helps solidify all of the working parts of PX Grid. In the next few videos, I'll go over how to code up a session subscribe Java client from scratch. It'll behave much like the sample we made we saw run today. So stay tuned.